problem. Fix it coming into this second well, draft. Certainly have to see. Is Poppy banned away by Hellions there as well? So going to continue to ban that away. Nothing's changed so far. But I think, again, just talk about the picks last time as Jana is actually going to be banned by Legacy. Respect. I yeah. guess the, uh, the Apprentice is showing respect to the Master again. Getting rid of the Jana, kind of impeding their laning phase. The bot lane was a weakness for Legacy. It was pointed out by the desk before. They were meant to win that matchup, and they just didn't. Yeah, couldn't get it done as Corky also banned away. So continuing the trend now of banning just relatively strong champions. We have to look at GP, we have to look at Ryze. Where are they going to get banned away, if at all? And most importantly, Hellions get the last ban. So if they leave them open, what do Hellions want to go with? Well, if Legacy want to pick the Ryze, they should be banning the GP right now. If they want to pick the GP, you ban the Ryze. Pretty simple stuff. I think if you ban neither and you pick the Ryze, you're giving over the Gangplank and you don't have your strategy to counter yep. the place. And they are going to ban the Ryze, so that kind of leaves the owners on Hellions to ban the Gangplank. But we did see Legacy beat GP relatively handily there. Tally had a good lane in the top side there, even though Ryu was holding just mine in what can be a bit uh, tricky early on for GP. And couldn't really get it done there, but we've seen what Gangplank can do when he gets going. So Hellions taking their time with their final ban. Yeah, they definitely are. Lots of thought has to be placed into this last ban. Legacy have put them into a pinch, knowing that there's first pick options, and okay. there it is. They'll actually ban Lissandra, so I have to think GP is certainly on the minds of Legacy, but haven't locked it in just yet. Not going to take too long, though, by the looks of things. We've seen Chu's win with Gangplank in the mid lane. We don't know about Tallywacker playing that in that top lane, but... Still something that you would have to assume he can. He's an ex-80 carry player. I'm sure he can shoot people with his gun. He'll be just fine. Maybe yeah. he's only effective every parlay cooldown, but uh, it is going to be the pickup regardless. It's like a C2 lock in the pirate. Yeah, they lock in that pirate, of course. Graves still open in this particular drafting phase. Didn't get banned here and was in the first one. And would not be surprised if this is picked up because Cookie goes towards early pressure junglers like the Lee Sin we saw from last game. Graves just does it a little bit healthier. Yeah, and maybe able to aid some of the aggression that could, did cost Cookie some spots, but Lulu Graves are going to be the first two picks here for Hellions, so good pick for Graves uh, in the jungle that was banned away in game one, and then a takeaway as well with Lulu. I, able, able to go either top or mid. Yeah, definitely a good first draft here from Hellions, being able to flex and having the pressure jungler in Graves, someone who can either gank or farm very successfully. The response from Legacy right now, though, looking at what's been picked away from them, Pretty much just default to the Alistar, maybe even pick your Callista with it again. They know they're not against the Janna. I'm sure this time they could win their bottom lane <laughs> in the 2v2. I mean, I think the lane's perfectly fine. Doesn't give away too much, like you mentioned. So there's Alistar at least, which was a good team fighting and skirmish pick for regret, even if maybe the lane didn't go as well as they would like. And I do like this. A bit more respect being shown as King's actually going to take away the Lucian. Yeah, they take the Lucian from Frey, and of course they do pick the bottom lane, which was expected coming into the second aspect of their rotation. They leave open Carbon with this jungle roll, even though they know what Cookie has got here in the middle lane. I will say that Graves is a very niche flex towards top. Yep. It's unlikely, I will say, here for the Helions, but it's entirely possible. So Legacy leaving their stronger draft until the very last rotation. Yep. And you can see Frey going to go to Ezreal, after Lucian being taken away. We've seen plenty of Ezreal in and around the place, but Helions, 25 seconds now to decide exactly where they want to go with picks three and four. We did maybe critique the game one draft a bit by picking your solo laners incredibly early, potentially cost them there. So they're going to slow things down a bit here and uh, not give away too much. In fact, they have flexes everywhere in this draft already. They do have flexes. We saw the hover of Morgana in that first game. That to me implies that it's going to be Denian on this champion. And we'll see if that's what they plan to do when they lock this one in. Yep, it is going to be Morgana Ezreal. So I imagine Frey's going to take the Ezreal and Denian's going to take the Morgana, but who really knows? No one. That's the thing, so yet to find out. Ryu, does he play Lulu to the same level that Bomb does? And is it worth putting it in that lane? We've seen Lulu do well against the Gangplank. So we need to find out here for Helions, which is why they've left their mid lane to the last draft, yep. which lane they want to have the Lulu win and is it against the Gangplank? Makes sense. So we are going to see Legacy clicking through a couple different picks here. Looks like they're looking for a jungle and a solo lane, either top or mid, wherever they want to put the Gangplank. And you, you did raise the question, we have seen Truth play, but we haven't seen Tally play it just yet. I'm sure he's capable, but he has to prove it in an OPL game. Definitely is a mechanical player in Gangplank. Only really promotes mechanics further, so no doubt in my mind he can play it. The question is, do they want to pick that one up and force Lulu into the middle lane even, put her in a shorter lane? 
or do they want to put Gangplank into the long lane where he can freeze and farm more successfully? Well, looks like he's going to be long lane today as Victor and Elise are the last two picks for Legacy. So no Rek'Sai, Carbon going to answer with a bit more of an aggressive jungler, I suppose. And uh, Victor, pretty standard stuff, very safe mid lane pick. Yeah, definitely safe. Going to do a lot of work here for Legacy also. The Victor giving more mixed damage to the roster, as does the Elise, as pretty much entirely physical beforehand. So, well rounded roster here from Legacy. They've got split push, they've got team fighting, they've got engage, they've got pick. Pretty much a bit of everything. Sounds pretty good. We'll see what aliens, though, do an answer with, with their final picks of the draft. Potentially lacking in the damage department just a tad. Yeah, not exactly, but yes, because they've got a Graves jungle yeah, that'll true. make up for that a lot. Ezreal does okay amounts of damage, but isn't going to hyper carry to maybe the extent of the Lucian, Gangplank, or the Victor. Yep. But will always be relevant with damage. Lulu's the same, similar to Ezreal, but in another role. I think, yeah, they could just round it out with more damage and it'll just be overwhelming. Yeah, and it's going to be Cassidy once again here, this time to a much better matchup for Bomb, or at least should be as he gains the levels, but we are going to have Morgana support. Ryu will take the Lulu there in top lane, as Hellions did give their Korean mid lane at that last turn. This has been known as the 50-50 matchup, I yep. would say, the Victor and the Cassidy, and they usually take to each other in a very even manner, and it comes down to who executes better. And what we've seen so far, Bomb, he executes quite well, as Legacy, they're just messing with him. Took him a while, but... Telling the truth, sorted out, managed <laughs> to get the swap going. Have to think they live in the same house, so it can't be too hard to say, hey, give me a champion. But they figured it out in the end. And uh, yeah, I like the matchup here. It's, it's really intricate, and I think we are going to see just how good these two mid laners are. Once again, they're very integral to these two lineups. Yeah, and the thing about that matchup as well, both champions have shields. It comes down to the usage of shields and who can out-sustain the mana usage as well. Tends to favor the Cassidy because he has the W, but entirely on what doesn't look like it's going to be an interactive and exciting matchup by any means is incredibly interactive and super intensive on mechanics. Yep. So it comes down to who plays it better. And we've talked about Soul Lens already. We actually have Tally in the reverse matchup now. We saw he was able to do quite well versus the Gangplank on the Lulu side. Now he's going to have to play the Gangplank side. Yeah, and we'll see how he does. Of course, shows he's capable of beating the Gangplank. We don't know how capable he is of actually playing it himself. Good first test here for Tally as it's almost... Salt in the wound for Ryu, who's the big member that needs to step up. Well, for certainly could be, but we are going to see who will take victory here in game two. Is it going to be hashtag LGC win? Get out on Twitter if you're cheering for them to take the clean sweep. Or right, Hellion's going to force it with a third game. Use the hashtag HLN win out there on Twitter. And don't forget everyone's favorite hashtag, I am OPL. Exactly right. And of course, we've seen the team compositions now, and it's all going to come down to this execution. Legacy, one game up, they've got the momentum, but... I don't think Helions are out for the count just yet. They've had their chance to come back now with a better drafting phase. All they need to do is get through this early game on the back of Cookie a lot more successfully. Yeah, and we did see that, again, like the just mentioned, early game looked up quite a lot smoother for Hellions. It does seem like they're improving note to note, but can be tricky here as we are going to get ourselves onto Summoner's Rift for our second game of the evening. Legacy looking to really put their foot down here and win the battle. Or win the war, I guess, between the two houses. They won the first battle. Let's see if they can take the second or if Hellions can answer back. Already a stylistic difference here, though, between uh, Ryu and Tally. Different itemization choices. Last game, they both had the Corrupting Potion. This game, it's a Doran's Ring for Ryu. So a bit of extra health. Looking to maybe out-sustain early. Could force teleports, though, for laning phase. And... I think jungle pressure again will be quite prevalent in this top lane. Yep, I think both Carbon and Cookie had pretty good showings in the first game, but Carbon was able to really show just how aggressively he prefers to play from the jungle. So we'll see what Carbon can get done here on the Elise. We've seen this matchup a bit in the OPL already. And while Elise is a great pressure jungler, Graves might just be a touch better. Yeah, it depends on the situation, right? Graves just has more damage. Carbon, to be fair, lots of single target damage can take down one member very easily. All comes down to who catches who first, because you could very easily see Elise find Cookie, burst him and then run away, or you could see Cookie find Carbon, do the exact same thing. Yep, and it does hurt here. Regret and King are going to take the Krugs here in bottom side. We are going to have standard lane, so no lane swap, which we thought we might see a bit of, but after seeing Frey and Denny and hold their own in game one, I have to think they'll be happy with the 2v2. That's Cookie here on the Krugs as well, so opposite sides this time for the junglers. And not really kiting the Krugs there, Cookie, just brute forcing his way into their faces. Graves doesn't really care, I will say that much, but Carbon on the other hand, trying to effectively kite the Gromp as much as he can. Yeah, pretty smooth there, actually just pretty much turned around and leveled up, started the blue buff, so looking good there, at least mechanically. It's a little things early on for the junglers. As Choose and Bomb will take the mid lane once again. You can see already those early Qs leveled up. 
Wow, that binding. Start to come into play. That was a nice binding for Denian. But level two spike is here. Denian going to get punted out by Regret. And damage is down. King's going to eat a Mystic shot. But a nice Whoa. trade there from Lucian. And that was just hitting that level two sooner, controlling the minion waves. And Regret being on top of the Morgana as he ticked over. As a ridiculous binding came out from Denian, unbelievably. But they still lose the trade. Yep. Really nicely played there by Legacy's bottom lane, and we're definitely expecting it to be a bit more proactive, I'll say, as Ryu once again off to the races here in top. Tally sort of feeling the pain that he inflicted earlier on, but he's going to try and do his best here. And starting kegs at level 2, Tally didn't go for the heal. Not looking to stay in this lane too much with that W. Wants to try and control the minion wave more. So now runs a risk of dying, though, before being level 3. Base check, nice timing there for Cookie on the gank. I think Q went a little short. Tally going to shoot his keggers. Now Carpet's in the mid lane, trying to mind game Bomb. But Bomb flashes very nicely there. Yeah, Bomb actually being very patient with that flash usage, waits for the minion waves and flashes over the cocoon to safety. Smart play here from this Korean mid laner. Bomb putting his mechanics on display. Yeah, and another aggressive flash from Carbon as he's straight into the enemy jungle. On that blue buff now, but Cookie might find him here, and we could see fireworks. That was a lot of time spent looking for that gank mid here from Carbon, so there's a chance that he runs into Cookie. Of course, Carbon smartly backs away. We'll find him, though. Reasonably low mana. He's waiting for his support. This is smart stuff once again from Legacy. Cocoon will land. They're going to move in onto him. Regret. He's going to get in range, but Cookie's forced to flash away, and they'll just take the summoner. And they're walking back around the long way because Denian made his way here on this Morgana, of course. Not going to be able to find the warden. The pressure's just going to remain here, Legacy. They're diving mid, you would have to say. Looks like it. Bomb, I think, knows what's happening. He's going to get himself off towards his tier two. So not going to bite there, but Carbon looks for the wolf camp. Might try and take that away. Just to remind you, Cookie's still on the same side of the jungle. This is very aggressive from Carbon. Absolutely is. He had his support advantage. Saw Denian back in lane and quite comfortable stuff here from Carbon. As again, we've said he was running the 100 meter sprint. Well, he hasn't slowed down. Momentum still well and truly there. This tally is forced back early. Does use the TP back into the lane, but he's oh. gonna have it. Uh, <laughs> awkward. Big hit a minion there. Oh, unlucky, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not so sharp just yet on the GP mechanics. Oh, you give him one. Warming up. Everyone Warming gets up. one. Well, that's Tally's one at least for this game. Is Ryu gonna walk back by the looks of things? Buys a second Dorrance and a pair teleported. of boots. No, we'll teleport. And Cookie's like, get out of my jungle. Carbon's like, nah, I like it here. Does land the cocoon in. Smite battle. Missed by Cookie. And Carbon steals the blue out from under him. Yeah, Cookie actually smote the, dra uh, the blue buff down to 50 health, but got hit by the cocoon at the same time. So couldn't combo the smite with any follow-up damage. Carbon gets the blue, but is about to find a lot of damage in his face. Yeah, this is the battle we thought we might see here as Carbon caught on the wrong side here. He's going to take a whole heap of damage from this grave. He needs help. Speed Trine's good. It might just be enough space. Cookie quick draws in, one auto needs another one, Regret needs to move him out of the way, it's battling speed helping, Cocoon will land onto Cookie and the Binding lands onto Regret, dead. now he's going to die by the looks of things, he does go down for first blood as Frey takes it. And Alistar goes down for first blood off the back of Carbon losing a jungle battle here against Graves, the aggression does not pay off in the end here for Legacy, King and Regret both have to rotate around to try and keep him alive and Honestly, nothing he can do to stay alive, Regret. Cops the binding. Good work from Denian. Yeah, Denian's binding's been on point so far. As Regret, I think, saves the summoner spells on anything else there. So he's going to keep them for a later time. But we saw the Lucian getting aggressive here. But the CS lead now onto Frey after that little exchange. And the kill. Yeah, which is great. Going to go back with a bit of extra money in his pockets from First Blood. BF sword up for King. We'll see what Frey can get as Coach Jish from the Chiefs. We'll weigh in. I don't think a team should get Gangplank, Elise, and Alistair on this patch. Absolutely right, coach. Not going to deny that whatsoever. It's a strong draft. Alistair is such a power pick at the moment. Almost 100% pick ban rate internationally. Elise. Overbearing. Bomb's Hello, fighting. Yep, level 6 there for Cassidy. Means that Bomb can start to get aggressive. Choo Choo's does have some potion charges. And the upgraded hex score. Level 6 now on his own. So Bomb going to have to be a tad more careful when he goes in. But Cookie's coming around. Oh, Carbon's here as well. Hello, 2v2. Gonna start another Cookie. Ulti down. And that looks to be a dead Graves. He's gonna try and make it work. But Carbon takes him out. The Spiderlings get the kill. He was trying to let the Chaos Storm pick up the kill here. 
Whoa, hello. Choo-choo's goes in, gets the ignite down and gets a 1v1 kill. Bomb overstaying his welcome did not have health to speak of. I think he tried to freeze the wave or something because he wasn't that low when we first looked at him. And that's now two kills out of thin air. And there's Regret coming in again, but King's going to eat the binding. They are going to turn and fight it. Exhaust are down. Black Shields pop King. Getting a little low the, as Regret's trying to zone the boy. GPLT there from Tally. And Denny's now Denny is dead. completely zoned out. Cullen's going to get used. Denny and will fall. And Regret maybe looks at Chase. He does still have the flash from earlier, but doesn't want to use it. Frey still with the summoners up. And look at the zone control that a gangplank can put on the map with just the R button. Simple work here. They pick up a third kill. And again, I'm going to say that one was forced. The rest were out of thin air. The exhaust from Regret was the biggest deal here. Denny overstays. He completely tries to fight this and all in. Not the synergy that the team had. And signs of weakness from Denny and Frey again. Yeah. And you can see King. He takes the more aggressive AD carry. And all of a sudden, feels like Regret and King are back to their old tricks here. Well, I guess relatively new tricks. Yeah. Given they haven't played together for too long. But definitely the aggression we expect from these two. Absolutely right, of course. Legacy's bot lane should be coined for their aggression. Having a 2-0 Lucian, though, will only put that up even further as if they weren't aggressive enough. Dangerous start here for Helions, and a lot of small mistakes individually have started to cost them. As Carbon even went and stole the red buff before. <laughs> That's why Bomb was chasing him out when you saw that trade earlier. What a jerk. He's trying to get him out of his... In jungle. And it's never ends. It's just been difficult for Hellions to do exactly that. We've seen Legacy constantly pushing up their lanes ready in position to help with the counter jungling effort. No watching the instant replay, you have to imagine Flash Pulp. Yep, looks in there onto Freya. King comes back and just goes in for the tower dive. Bomb though, in trouble. Chaos Storm is down. Victor just going to chase him out of the lane. This is pretty standard Victor strategies that you may have seen here and there. When the ultimate's available and you can out-trade your opponent. In this case, if a Kassadin doesn't have his Q. Free reign of popping the Chaos Storm. Might have seen the Rift Walk there as well. Choo Choo's are going to eat a bunch of damage there. And that's almost Whoa. dead, but he barely lives. <laughs> he uses the Q at the same time as the burst. The Negatron Cloak avoids majority of that magic damage from Bomb. And the Q Shield keeps him alive through Graves Burst. Lucky, but effective. Calculated. From Choo Choo's. Yeah, definitely. He's not really missed a beat here in mid lane. Is a little bit down on CS, but looking just fine here, especially with that aggressive flash player. Speaking of aggressive, Regret and King do not find Cookie. Oh, yeah, they have. Find him now. Denian's up there as well. Regret wants it. It's a binding for his trouble. This is one of those moments where it's like, let's all act surprise the legacy are invading Helion's jungle. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day in the office here for Legacy is what's yours is mine, essentially. What's mine is mine too, apparently, for Legacy. Yeah, what's on the map just, is ours. They've just, well, that's, you know, it is a two... It is a te two teams do have Look, to clash on they're the doing blue buff right now, trying to give it to the cast, and, you know, standard. Nope, not Carbon's today. like, nah, this is either yours or mine. Well, it's going to be Carbon's. He does get the smite down. And denied away from Cassidy in one way or the other. Carbon even gets the icing on the cake and gets it. We're at again. <laughs> Binding to the face, but he'll just romp around. He'll be okay. He's an angry moo cow. He'll be perfectly fine. Bomb again going aggressive. Choose. I would have traded nicely. Carbon maybe looks for a dive this time. He's going to flash in. Does land it, actually. They need to follow in. Bomb's going to flash out. And teleport's burnt everywhere. Cancelled as well as Bomb's chased out of mid lane. Yeah, the fight almost broke out there, but the dive from Carbon's still successful if you can force the flash out of bomb. Doesn't get the kill and uses the summoner himself, but one thing we know from Carp, he'll just use it at any opportunity. He has been using the flash like it's his job here. Because Ryu does slow him down. Repel does follow. Needs a cocoon. Red buff slow Aim there from the, the auto. Yeah, no, didn't juke. Yeah, did not juke. Had flash as well. Ryu, though, does save the summoner. And he'll be okay. What a mind game here from Ryu as well. Anyone would expect the juke. You're forced into a wall. You only have two options. There was a 50-50 from Carbon, but he's hanging around. He guesses it wrong this time. Is back in the bottom lane. Action still, of course. King with a Crit Cloak now and two Long Swords. So Essence Reaver up soon. But definitely doing a lot of work here. So we'll see this one again. Ryu, it looks silly, but it is a mind game. Yeah, I'm not going to say that it was Carbon missing either, as much as everyone will say that. Oh, Tally looks for it. Cookie goes straight aggressive, and the Repel's going to save him. Ryu might have to use the ulti, but he just shields himself up. Tally wants to chase. That could be a mistake here, as he does get the heal from Grass for the Undying, and Legacy will remain unscathed here in top. Yeah, they do get out with their lives. Carbon with the repel. 
avoids all of the Graves' burst, which was the biggest deal there. Smart usage, and they're not done. Cookie. This is aggressive. They are going to see Cookie does face check, jumping onto him, but the Wild Crow is still there, and Cookie <laughs> just blows Carbon away. Now Tally is forced to flush away. Carbon standing next to a wall tries to re-engage onto Cookie when Ryu has his Lulu ultimate. Not sure on that strategy. May well, want to rethink that one. Certainly will as Hellion's able to claim a kill in top lane, force the Gangplank out and take top tower. But we did see bottom tower did go over to Legacy. King now with the Essence Reaver done. And a Brawler's Glove for a bit of extra crit. It's an unintentional trade here, Legacy. They make a mechanical error and are lucky enough that their bottom lane is just commanding now and can get the turret. So they get the trade. This is the big lane now. Honestly, Gangplank's always going to be fine. Always going to farm be relevant. Lulu's already at that point of power where Rod of Ages is stacking. So still very relevant himself. So what's going to happen mid? It's the real question. Well, right now Bomb is up 10 CS. Choose playing a little further back. Doesn't really want to get ganked when the map has opened up quite a bit. But he's playing fine. Victor once again will scale up just nicely. Much like the GP will. And Legacy has certainly slowed down the pace a little bit. Carbon... He's definitely, <laughs> he's definitely kept it cranked all the way up. But the rest of the team, with, and with the comp they've got, it makes sense. They are slowing things down just a tad. It's King and Regret actually topside now. Going to look to 2v1 and take this tower, but There's help is on there. the way. Absolutely, members here. Chaos Storm down. Gravity Field almost enough for the stun. Choose takes a turret hit. But Bomb will lose the trade in the end. Oh my god, that's annoying. It's just a lot of force damage here, Bomb. Nice laser there from Choo Choo's, and Bomb can't Could really stay. Tarot being taken by Choose is a big deal. It almost feels like a natural take as well. Bomb trying to stay, but he just can't afford it. Legacy going to take the Rift Herald away as well. And Denian might try and snipe it away. But he's going to go over to Carbon. Yeah, I was going to say, it took a little bit to do it, but the mid turret does fall at the exact same time. So map objectives entirely controlled here from Legacy as that 10 CS leads now essentially zero. And across the board here, Helions, they're trying to answer. And I feel like the only time they are answering at the moment is from mechanical misplays out of Legacy above all else. Yeah, it just seems like Legacy are certainly the more proactive team, sometimes to a fault with their aggression. But you can see still at it, King and Regret. Now versus Ryu and Denian and Cookies here as well. So they're just going to continue applying pressure. Don't need to overcommit as Tally is going to go to the bottom lane and fight Frey, actually, with the Trinity Force done for hmm. GP. And 2k up here for Legacy. Things looking good. I will on. say that Legacy have proven that they're exploitable almost to a fault here. They're staying over aggressive in the top lane when it's a 2v3. They're aware that their jungler has just given over the blue buff, which means two members from Legacy aren't going to rotate. They're just assuming that because they're not in vision, they can push places like this. Easily punishable things here from proactive teams can take Legacy onto the back foot. It's just that Helions have shown already their track record in the early game is not proactivity as such. It's more laning phase and extending that out. Yeah, in general, it's just been a little distinct, I guess, from Helions. Let's choose clearing out happily now. Got the Abyssal Scepter done, laser upgraded, and the CDR boots, plus blue buff, so good luck trying to take the turret there, Bomb. His legacy are going to start up the dragon for themselves. A little late, but better late than never here for Dragon, as the first one is always good to get. Yeah, absolutely. They'll pick up this first Dragon, no worries whatsoever. Just continue on their jungle escapades, no doubt. Straight into the enemy jungle, blue buffs up. Surprise! Tally puts a barrel over, wards there as well, we'll sweep it for vision. Legacy continue their smart trend of evading, and Choose gets a refresh. He absolutely does. I feel like I've seen this before, Page <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know where either. <laughs> it was a great getting chased out of top lane. Now Hellions decide to answer and shove them out, but you said already, just sticking in here. A little too over-aggressive of the Legacy duo. Happy to pick up farm where they can because they're confident in their ability to outplay. But now Tally is going to force the issue in the bottom lane. Bomb returns to mid, but Gangplank's people just started. Carbon's in here as well in his back pocket, and even Choose is coming along for the ride with his blue buff. Yeah. The Legacy bot lane is the only one that needs to start rotating with the rest of the team or controlling the side waves. So what they're doing now by drawing extra members is perfectly fine. Bomb as well is now here. He only has an Abyssal Scepter though. So in terms of skirmishing, you only get two or three ultimates out of him at most before he's out of mana completely. 
dangerous stuff here. Yeah, got to make him count. So denying the blue, definitely hurting Cassidy even more than it otherwise would. Yeah. Cassidy's relatively blue dependent. Once again, Bomb going for that early defensive item. So is going to delay the Rod of Ages again. Well, that's like really, if he goes for a Rod of Ages now, it's going to be like 23 minutes yeah. maybe. That's beyond delayed. It's like GP has his second item by then as well. Yeah, BF Sword Vitalik, Infinity Edge is on the way. Uh, uh, could be Essence Reaver as well, I guess. So. All signs point to Essence Reaver given the long sword as well. That's true. That one doesn't help Infinity Edge. No. <laughs> not even Last you Whisper can't, anymore. Can't staple. Look, trust me. Try and staple enough long swords together, it's still not going to make a pickaxe. No. I tried. Regret eating a Q there from Frey. Level 11 actually for the Ezreal. So doing pretty well. Does have the Ice Mon Gold now, but Carbon comes charging and regrets like, I know exactly where this is going. I've seen this movie. Don't really, didn't really like the ending. There's Carbon here, now to pressure the top outer. Oh my god, going in for it. Frey in trouble, GP ulti down, breaking to die in the CC. Barely live, but will finally fall as King gets a double already with Graves dead. He's going to try and move out of the way. But Bomb is massive as Choose comes in over the top there. We'll get the first one, Regret again. Another stun move there onto Ryu. Move Storm. Doesn't quite move it. Flash Cocoon, though, will land in. Ryu's going to die as Choose gets a double. And Choose and the rest of Legacy find easy kills from this tower dive. Regret with the Flash engage connects with everybody and takes them down. Cookie even using the dash. They get hit by the cocoon at the same time. And the only mistake there was King's target selection as he's then forced under the turret aggressively stands. And Ryu kind of forces them into that situation to go down. Choose flashes the wall to secure the double kill though for himself. As Regret and Carbon, they just keep hitting these knockups and stun combos. Yeah, doing work there as Legacy's teamwork. Certainly starting to get shown off a bit here in that mid game. Top turret did fall as well. So Legacy were able to complete the <laughs> sacking the of the clock. outer ring. It just doesn't end. Like I am utterly surprised the cookies managed to be 4 CS ahead of Carbon. It has to be lane minions. Because there's no jungle. No. <laughs> Red buff up now. We'll see how long and who gets it. This bomb. Watch He's Carbon. That He's already ages. pinged it. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, Legacy Squad gonna move <laughs> out. That's how it said. Basically a red buff, right? At least also mention this super good at taking down Rift Herald because the spiderlings draw a focus. You Poor can hit Herald. him in the eye. Right in it. Doesn't like it too much, but it makes it easier to take him down as he is gonna die just before he would normally move away. Carbon once again gonna get the buff. And Legacy off to do work as usual. Look up at the gold lead, 5,000 up still for Legacy. So have really got themselves nice and ahead here. You can see Tally, <laughs> Essence Weaver on the way. Keg, not quite in the right spot. He's Tally. just hitting minions instead of Kegs. I feel like he's okay with it. I think the Keg was almost like a fake pressure because he wants the minions to push to him. Just looks funny when he does it. Yeah, well, Tally, once again, 004, having a fine time on Gangplank. Certainly been a big beneficiary of Legacy's good teamwork here in the mid game. Just able to throw that GP LT out and, con and contribute to the fight still. And the good thing about this is Tally showing he doesn't need to be the carry of this team. He can let Choo Choo's do it. He can just be the facilitator. 004 on the GP, just the ultimate bot at the moment. Yep, nice to see King stepping up as well, having a much more aggressive game as he does have two items done already on the Lucian. Frey, this is not a safe place for you to farm, my friend. His Legacy 4 strong. And deal a pretty significant amount of damage to that top tier two. They are indeed, and Carbon once again hitting another cocoon. This guy is ridiculous right now. No skill shot seems to be missing. And the pressure from Legacy is starting to mount. Tally has the teleport available, Ryu does not. And this is a good window of opportunity here. To utilize that as, honestly, Bomb doesn't either, and he's mid lane. Yeah, and while we did see, you know, a good early game from Legacy, both in this game and in game one, probably a bit better in game one, and certainly probably best known for strong macro play in the mid game as Bomb is getting chased by Lucian. Goose getting pop Ghosts, sorry, getting <laughs> popped. Goose. Goose chase. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, oh my Cookie again. Honestly. He's gonna eat the culling as well. In fact, he almost just goes down for that. Carbon looks to chase. Bomb riff walks forward. Gonna clear that minion wave out. And Legacy again continuing the strong macro game we know them for. When I say Carbon doesn't miss, I don't mean to that extent. That was just disgusting. But, Legacy, you're right. Here they go. Oh, missed that one. Didn't Thank see you. it, though. Didn't count. Can <laughs> confirm Carbon is human. Well, good to see. Not some cocoon bot. <laughs> Poke being set up now. Tally. Kegs it up. But wave clear pretty good here for the Lulu and the Ezreal. 
Still trying to poke though, damage is good. Frey gets poked a little bit there by a barrel, but Bomb going in, Carbonate to binding. The damage not quite there. Ulti there for disengage, Regret wants to go in, they're trying to find Cookie, they'll look to lock him down, and Tally able to snipe him just off the side. 5v4 now under the tier 2. And Alistar and a Gangplank are so good for counter engage. Regret! Well, so Ulti wants to go back in, finds Denian, but he's just trying to disengage. Frey intelligently moves out of the cocoon. Good boy. just takes out a support. Victor melting people like we all know he can, and the tier 2 will fall. Absolutely easy work here for Legacy. They just go back towards the blue buff again. Make sure Cassidy doesn't get that one. Then they go to the dragon. Simple execution and map rotation here for Legacy. Secures them picks, secures them turrets, and indefinitely, as such, the gold lead. This side, when it comes to the map movements, are looking unbeatable. And you mentioned the gold lead. It is relatively massive at this point. We've got 7,000 gold up now for Legacy. And 23 minutes in. It's a tough road here for Hellions. We did see the games they were able to win in their series last week were relatively drawn out. So they do trust in their late game team fighting and the scaling of their comp. But Legacy are not a team that lets up lightly, if ever. No. Hellions going to really have to batten down those hatches because the storm has arrived. Absolutely has. And Cyclone King is making his way in. And he doesn't slow down for anybody. Legacy, I said it before, they reminded me of something with the way they were playing around this buff control. Well, the answer is Xiao Gu from the LPL, who is currently the best team there, you would have to say, arguably. And the fact that they can look so reminiscent to a professional team of that caliber can only sing praises here for the macro level strategy of Legacy. Certainly can as Carbon. Still doing work here in the jungle. Just going to sit here and take out a pink ward. Cookie to Cocoon. Carbon going in for it. Willie to Binding. Damage is there. End of the line. Pop there for Graves as Carbon drops to about 30% health. Tally Nina on the bottom lane. Oh my god, that was a crit. Ulti up. Flashes forward. Good ulti from Ryu. But Tally, one more crit. Makes it easy. Simple gangplank stuff. Lulu can only deal with the GP damage for so long. As once you upgrade that ultimate and you have it for pressure in your own lane, picks up the solo kill. That's not what you want to see here for Helions. No, doesn't need the solo land this time, as Tally's doing all sorts of work on that bottom side of the map. Really still dead for five. 20 seconds. Once again, maybe pressuring too hard here. No GP ulti, but he does have teleport. This King's just going to take the red buff away. Bomb wants it so bad. Finding lands, he'll go in. Carbon going to look for the cocoon, doesn't find it. Damage is there from Truzy, comes out. And Bomb is going to move in over the back, but King crits his face off as Tally has put it in. And Legacy will leap forward as King goes absolutely ballistic. Choo Choo's gets a double on the back end of the fight, and Denian's flashed over the wall safely. Denian flashes away, but Tally also makes his way in, and that's the major difference between these two teams right now. Lulu was dead. And of course, Helions, they find advantages with health bars, and they immediately, they immediately look to fight. It's a smart decision from them strategically. But you can't execute on this against the GP who can just make his way in. Against an Alistar who can just press the R button and be unkillable. A mobile Lucian. You can't kill Elise. And Victor was the only one with full health. And unfortunately, if the game was a little closer, perhaps that would have been the right fight to take. But Legacy are now well and truly 10,000 plus gold ahead. That's 12.5k up already at 25 and a half minutes. They can look to Baron now. They can look to just about anything, it feels like, at this point. House Legacy on the rise here, as the choo-choo train has certainly been going. It's at its station, that's for sure. The station's victory station. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Thank you for clarity. Just in case you weren't all aware, on one, what Rusty. I meant was they're playing well and they're winning. I would agree, it looks like the choo-choo train. Had to clear it up. Still on the tracks, and so are the rest of Legacy here. Regret, he's going to eat a binding, but he'll shake it off. Legacy going to take the Baron. Denian's going to look in for a steal. Almost hit a barrel for his trouble. And Legacy, Baron buffed up. Crazy far ahead in this one. Hellions, we already talked about having to weather that storm. Cyclone King started things up with a low-pressure system, where Legacy's now going to move through this mid lane, and they are so happy to take a fight. Category 5? Yeah. Now? Is that what we're at? Yeah. Uh, look, I'm the weatherman. Did a movie about this once. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little nice little cake chain there from Tally, but doesn't quite go all the way he wants it to. Hellion's going to try and use that wave clear and do what they can. But Baron Buff up here. All tier 2s and out is done. 
Regret just goes in, he wants bomb, he's popped the ulti in, and the damage is massive there from the AoE, but a little Whoa. too aggressive on the dive, maybe enough, as Cookie barely lives through everything, but Dennying was not so lucky. That burst was unreal, the GP ultimate with the Victor ultimate couples together. Whoa, oh, hello. bomb, good snipe on the King, and that Carbon's might actually dead. this Carbon, yep, takes the tower hit, bomb gets a double fray, moves out of the way of those kegs, and Legacy almost had that. In typical King fashion. Over-aggressive, tries to get the turret down. They almost break the base. But Helions live to see another day as we are going to see this particular engage again. Or we're just going to see King die. Same time as an Ezreal Q, to be fair. Making yep. bomb like he did that much damage. And the burst will have to be respected here. As Legacy lose Baron, lose a couple key members. Going to have to reset, lose a bit of that duration on the ones that still have it. And maybe go back to try and take that middle inhibitor turret. This is just a case of King, again, it's the cockiness. He's the young mechanical player, not actually showing enough respect to his opposition. And sure, they're ahead by a large margin, but it doesn't matter how far ahead you are as an AD carry. If you miss position and not show respect to your opponents, you will get paid, you will pay for it. Especially uh, Cassidy, that actually has a pretty decent amount of farm. He did get the Rod of Ages, he's actually charging it up relatively slowly, but we talked about it, Hellion. They do have a window here in the game. If they can get to the later stages, they've shown they're able to fight well together and use their scaling champions. They have plenty of scaling here. I don't think they've ever been this far behind, though, to bring oh, it I would to agree. the late game. Oh, Denian, I'm sorry. Choo Choo uses the <laughs> ulti just to ensure. It didn't quite have enough with the regular burst. He wanted to get the auto attack from the Q, but wasn't in range. So he just walked back and decided to ult as the pathing actually took him away. He had to walk back to change his mind. Mid turret is in jeopardy, as is top, because Bomb may have his teleport, but he's so far away. Yeah, this is a little risky, perhaps, as Legacy are going to go back in. Tally doing work and actually forcing the TP top lane. Was it worth it? I don't know. The mid now broken. I think Hellion's maybe not, as Bomb is going to be the target. They'll jump in on him in the damage. Pretty massive, but King's going to get knocked back. They are going to move back in. Choose will chase him. Frey looking for a pick on the other side, as Cookie's in the front lines as well. Bomb is forced back. They're going to chase him to stop that recall. King looking for a 1v1. He gets the shutdown. He dies, though. And he does die <laughs> on the back end. Oh, King, when will it stop? He does trade. He forces down the primary carry of this Helion's lineup. That's one inhibitor. That's almost two. Looks to be two here. Ryu trying to fight off Tally, but Gangplank's a little too strong at this point. Legacy actually make King's sacrifice quite worthwhile here. They do. And Helion's push them back one more time. They live to fight another battle, but it could be their last one. Is let's all act surprised. I can't believe King actually killed him. He dashed forward. It was it was going to be covered, all right, by the Choo <laughs> Understanding exactly what King's capable of doing, and that's using your relentless pursuit relentlessly towards a Cassidy's face. But <laughs> he does get the kill. Ooh. Probably almost eat a binding there. As Cookie is going to take the grump away. Hellion's trying to get what farm they can. The jungle has not really been theirs for most of this series, so happy to get it where they can. Poki now going to take the Scuttle Crab. Dragon actually up. So a possible take here for Hellions would give them a nice bit of stats boost, but yeah. Legacy already in the area. I don't know if they can get this, because they have two different waves to worry about also. And the major concern here for Helions in this game has always been they don't have a tank. They've got a Lulu to try and buff someone up to be an effective tank. It's almost like faking that you've got one. Graves is still building half tanky items. Ezreal builds half tanky items. Sure, they can deal with a bit of skirmish damage and trade tally. Oh, he finds them. Puts the ward in and just goes to turn in on him. Great battle there, Lantinus. Regress is going to move in. Cookie is getting sliced up by the Gangplank as he'll live with Lulu Ulti on top of him. <laughs> it was cute. They almost made it work, but Tally can eat oranges. Oh, bomb. Aggressive again. He's what are you doing? And just gets snapped off. Choo Choo's and King just do too much damage, and Carbon is on point with these cocoons. Carbon does not miss the cocoons. Legacy, last inhibitor remaining. They're pushing in. Yep, the siege is on here for Legacy. There's not much of a siege. Frey gonna eat another cocoon as the Carling gonna come over the top to try and take him out. Denian, not so lucky. King flashes forward in King style, and he's gonna wreck face in the back lines. Legacy pick up the ace, and they'll take the win 2 0. As close as you could possibly get to that Nexus King shows aggression from start to finish. The rest of Legacy also couple together, and Carbon brings Legacy over the line in a ridiculous performance from this jungle. Yeah, Carmen, absolutely awesome play for those two games. Aggressive, almost to a fault, but what a performance from the side.
definitely. They've shown that they can speed the pace of this game up in a fantastic performance. From Certainly Legacy. was. And with that, let's get a bit more from it as we throw back over to the analyst desk. Thank you so much, guys. A convincing 2-0 win for Legacy there over Hellions. And what we were hyping up as a battle of the two houses, it looked like, however, something even more basic came back from there. Legacy's macro play at the moment just looks unrivaled within the OPL. The Chiefs were known for it. Legacy is starting to take over there. It, how is it watching them play that? <laughs> no, it's it's very impressive to watch, and uh, and I, I can almost say that I'm proud that like there's another team that is like taking our style and taking the macro approach instead of just fighting all the time. Like their their team fight in general is just is is really good, and just when they set up these objectives, they they really punish you if you make any misplays. Yeah, and I actually really like that you drew that comparison between yourselves now and Legacy. And I think it's fantastic because we're looking at this OPL and it's not like seeing it's just the Chiefs that even if they fall behind early, you just understand that they're going to come back in the late game because they're just better at controlling the map. Legacy now doing it. Of course, dials were impressive as well. So it's really good to see everyone leveling up. Because what I want to hit on, and I, I think that a lot of people will take away from this that it was a 26-31 minute victory from Legacy both times. I mean, a little bit predictable there in the end, but... If I'm a Hellions fan, and if I'm Ryu or someone very veteran on that team, like Dedian, I'm looking at that th saying, oh, early game didn't look that bad. We stood up against a team that's currently 3-0 in the o OPL. Yeah, I can I can completely agree that, like, going, Hellion going into this uh, series, they're probably not expecting to, like, have great results. And even though they lost, and it might have seen convincingly, like, I actually think that they punished Legacy a little bit in the early game. And individually, they're really showing that they're improving. Yeah, and I think it's the confidence levels as well. I mean, Hellions are playing not necessarily like they're about to win the series, whereas Legacy, it, like, it looked like game number one that Carbon thought that he was ahead by 5,000 gold from the beginning. Well, that's a man I want to hit on because traditionally when then Avant, now Legacy, were an amazing organization, if their jungle was rolling, at least you've casted him for a, a couple of years now, Carbon looks like he's better than he ever has been. Yeah, Carbon looks unbelievable. Not even necessarily building the Trinity Force on the Rek'Sai side this time around. Of course, my personal favorite <laughs> Carbon situation. But I mean, Carbon was instrumental in their victory over the Chiefs' then immunity, I believe, when they went over to Gamescom as well. Carbon has always been this, this veteran force on the lineup. And of course, it's all, all about the emotions. And this guy looks like he's on cloud nine right now. <laughs> so I want to end off with uh, Chiefs versus Legacy. It's been a rival for a very long time. When you look at this Legacy lineup... Are you getting a little bit of... How's, how's the barometer going for the Chiefs right now? If you're a Chiefs fan, are you starting to sweat a little bit, Swife, or are you still all right? <laughs> I won't lie. Like we're, not, we're not winning as convincingly as we, we have been in the past, and Legacy is definitely in the top three, if, if not like rivaling like first place in terms of the split. Um, us, uh, we're, we're not really afraid because we do, we do play each other a lot. We know each other's play styles, but when, when players step up, they really shine, and like the players who step up normally carry the games. So I, I do think it's going to be a very good match, similar to like the Dial series. And on the other side of the rift, you know, we were saying Hel Hellions, we don't think they're quite there for the top three. They could push into the top four. With what you saw tonight, is is that still the hope? Do you think that this team is one of the few teams that can break into that top four, go to playoffs this time around? Look, like if if they take the positives out of tonight and not just like get really demoralized and down and think they just lost for no reason, like they they can take a lot of strong points in their play style and. And if, if, they, if they calm down their, their aggression in the mid game and take, don't take these risky fights, then I really think they can be a really good scaling team going into the late game. Certainly hope so. Well, guys, that is our result for tonight. Legacies will take it 2-0, but that's not all the OPL we have for you. Join us next Monday at 7 o'clock Australian Daylight Saving Time, our new time for some more League of Legends.